series called Blueprint, Living God's Vision for Your Life. And uh, just looking at verse by verse through the book of Nehemiah today, we're in Nehemiah chapter 6, and, uh, and we're going to crank it right up. So looking forward to what God wants to teach us today. You know, a few weeks ago, some of you will know this, some of you, this will be brand new, you, you're not aware of this, but a few weeks ago, we had an automobile accident in our home, and you guys can relate to if you've had children, uh, it was our daughter, our middle daughter, had her first ever car accident. She had never had one. And, uh, and so um, you see kind of her car there, and uh, that's her hood off to the about 10 yards back behind her car. Um, let me kind of set the story here. That's Dayla getting out of her car. Um, this was a picture that was actually taken by the police officer that hit her. Um, and so, yeah, isn't that fun? And uh, so here's kind of what happened, and, and, and I know this is a serious deal, but uh, you'll find maybe a little bit of humor in this. Dayla had just left Domino's Pizza. And she's a college student down in Lakeland, and she had just left Domino's, and so she had a pizza sitting in the front seat with her. And Dela is our, um, our child in our home. She's, uh, she's, got, um, she's a very healthy girl, very healthy eater, and so she doesn't order cheese on her pizza. And so she gets extra red sauce on her pizza. And so she had this, uh, this cheese pizza. She's got a khaki interior in her car. And, uh, and so she, she is just leaving the traffic light after picking up her pizza. She's doing, you know, 15 miles an hour through the intersection when an unmarked officer came through the intersection and, uh, and hit her on her side right there on her front tire. And now, the humorous part, she called me from the accident scene and she said, Dad, I got to tell you what happened, though. It was really funny. When he came over to the car, he went into panic mode. Because my pizza went all over the front of me, all over the windshield and the dash, and there was red sauce everywhere. I, 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 uh, I said, Dela, who all is around? And I ended up talking to the gentleman's boss. The, he called himself Captain. I talked to him, and, and this was the phrase that he used with me. He said, Mr. Miller, I'm so sorry. My officer got distracted. Now, isn't that an interesting line? Got distracted. You know, most people don't give up on their dreams. They just get distracted. That that really is what happens in most people's life. From accomplishing the great God-sized stuff in your life, it's not that you just abandon the dream, the vision that God places in your life. It's that the vision fades because of distraction. Think of it this way. Have you ever been sitting and you've got something you need to accomplish? Let's say that you're a student and you're handling something academically or maybe you're working and you've got a project due and so you need to sit down at the computer, really laser focus and get that work done, but all of a sudden something pops up like Messenger from one of your social media sites and it says you've got a message and you know that you don't have time to check it. Because you've got to get that project done. You've got to get that report turned in. You've got to get that work taken care of. But you click on it. And and when you look at that social media site, it leads you to a video. And now you're watching the video. And then you've got to respond to it. And pretty soon, 45 minutes has gone by. You've checked out everybody else's social status. You've commented on everything. You've liked or disliked everything. And pretty soon, a long time has gone by, and you go, whoa, wait, I'm going to run out of time to get my project done. Several years ago, I, uh, when I was working on some seminary work, I, uh, I, I discovered that one of the things that challenged me was because it's a lot of time in front of the computer, was that when I wanted to check social media accounts, I couldn't do that if I wanted to get my education portion done. Because it, I would find an hour or two would go by. So maybe you are somebody and you're checking out your Snapchat, or you're checking out your Keek, or you're checking out your tweets, or you're checking out your Instagram or your Facebook or whatever else is out there these days. And you get distracted. And all of a sudden you're off task. Last week I used a steering wheel and said sometimes we just get out of alignment. Today, sometimes we just get distracted. Now, none of this is evil per se. That's that's not my point. The point is, sometimes we just lose focus. And that's what we're going to see from the narrative of Nehemiah's life as he begins to describe for us 
what it was going on. Now, we've looked at the first five chapters, and, uh, and we've seen a lot of different things have taken place in the life of Nehemiah. Now we turn the page into chapter 6, which I love this chapter. And, uh, and we're going to process right through chapter 6 today and, uh, and see what God would teach us. So if you want to discover God's vision for your life, you want to know what God has for you, here is a really fantastic way for you to stay focused. Because when God births something in you, there will be distractions come. How do you come back into an alignment so that you've got laser focus? And I'm going to show you three things that I think rise from Scripture. So starting in verse number 1 of Nehemiah chapter 6, says, Now when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arab and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall and there were no breaches left in it, although up to that time I had not set up the doors and the gates. So in other words, the walls have now been built. The holes that there were, the breaches that there were, have now been sealed with the exception of the doors and gates. Verse 2 says, Sanballat and Geshem sent to me. So they're going to send a note to Nehemiah. And they said, Come, let us meet together at Hecatharim in the plain of Ono. But they intended to do me harm. And I sent messengers back to them saying, Quote, I'm doing a great work. I cannot come down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and come down to you? And they sent to me four times in this way. And I answered them in the same manner. In the same way, Sanballat, for the fifth time, sent his servant to me with an open letter in his hand. You got the picture? Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem have said, hey man, why don't you just come down here and let's meet together. Let's talk this thing out. We see the wall has been built. You've sealed up the breach. Let's talk about this thing. Four times they send him a letter requesting him to come down. And on the fifth one, it's this open letter from Sanballat. And here's what it says. In it was written, verse 6, It is reported among the nations, and Geshem also says it, that you and the Jews intend to rebel. That's why you're building the wall. And according to these reports, you wish to become their king. You've also set up prophets to proclaim concerning you in Jerusalem. There is a king in Judah. And now the king will hear of these reports, Nehemiah. We're going to let the king know you, you are up to no good here. We get, well, hey, you're secretly trying to pull off a fast one here. You're trying to become the king. The Jews intend to rebel. Hey, we're going to let the king know about this. So, now come, let us take counsel together. Verse 8, Then I sent back to him, back to Sanballat, No such thing as you, have, as you say has been done, for you're inventing them out of your own mind. You're making it all up, he said. You don't even know what you're talking about. You're just taking bits and pieces of information, putting them together in some way that you want, and it's just not true. For they all wanted to frighten us, thinking, their hands will drop from the work and it will not be done. But now, O oh God, strengthen my hands. These first nine verses of Nehemiah chapter 6, I think, are some of the great nine verses of Scripture. And I hope you've got the picture. He has heard all kinds of taunting, being made fun of earlier in the book. Then they go to battle. There's like this military coup. All of these things to get him to stop doing. Listen, there are going to be things in all of our lives that are going to cause us to stop and go, man, if I do this, I'm going to move away from the mission that God has called me to. People are going to take shots, they're going to say things. And in, now in chapter number 6, I love verse number 8 where he says, here's the deal, Sanballat, I'm not coming down off the wall to go and meet you guys. You're just making all this stuff up. Now, <clears throat> three things to keep us focused that we're going to see from chapter number 6 that I just want to mention. If you're a note taker, I want to encourage you to write these. There's a pen in front of you. You can write down these three things. Number one, remember the importance of the work. It's important that you remember what it is that God has birthed in you. 
Because it's important to God, and it's important to you. And again, Nehemiah has been made fun of. They've, they've cursed him. They've thrown taunts at him. They've started a fight with him. They've tried to talk him down now through distraction. And listen, when the leader gets distracted, we're now seeing three exact examples from Scripture about how the leader can get distracted from the mission. And it slows down. When the petty talk starts, it begins to slow down all the stuff. And you go, well, man, this doesn't sound like petty talk. Man, I'm sure these guys were pretty serious. I mean, they're writing notes five times to him. Nehemiah, you got to stop doing what you're doing. Let's just go down and talk about this. But I love Nehemiah's response. I'm doing a great work for the Lord. I cannot come down. I'm just not going to waste my time talking to you. If you want to talk, then go talk amongst yourselves because you're going to just distract me from accomplishing what it is that God has called me to. And the same is true for you and I in our lives. When God births a vision in us, And we begin to start on that journey of accomplishing something great for God. There are going to be distractions that come along the way that are going to take you down off of the wall. And and by the way, most of the time it will sound and look really good. And pretty soon, you're distracted. I I want to do a little exercise with you real quick. And uh, I want to move you into action. So if you're thinking, hey, I came to church, I'm just going to sit and listen to the sermon and then go home and eat. I want you to do something real quick. I want you to think of three things in your life real quick. Three goals you would like to accomplish. And they might have been goals from a year ago and you just didn't get them done. Boy, on January 1, you said, I'm going to do this and it hasn't happened. Or maybe they've been things that you've been thinking about through this series about the vision God's placed in your life. I want you to think about one thing you could do between now and next Sunday that God could use you to accomplish, something between now and the end of the year, and maybe something, and I'll leave this uh, a little obscure to you, something maybe that's really big. You just go, man, if I could just do this for God, and I want you to take just a moment, I want you to write these three things down. Now, on the back of your bulletin, I've got a copy of the bulletin in here. On the back of your bulletin, there's three places for you to write down goals. If you don't have one of these then you're not going to be, write, be able to write it on the back, so grab one of those giving envelopes, write it on the back of the giving envelopes, or on a scratch piece of paper, or if you've got a smartphone, you can just pull up your notes section and jot down three things. So, in just a moment, I'm going to give you some really good cued music for you to write down three goals. One to be done in the next week, one to be done by the end of the year, one is up to you. You could do it in the next 24 hours, in the next three months, over the course of the next 16 months, or maybe before, you know, whatever that is. All right, so, are you ready to go? Thank you. All right, so you and I, we're going to have these things written down. I'm not collecting these, so there's no accountability for you. You can, you can totally blow this off, but I want to show you something if you'll just write down these three things. And if you're, you're uncomfortable, you don't want somebody next to you to go, oh man, I'm going to hold you accountable to one of those goals. That's incredible. Uh, then just put some initials down. All right, we're going to cue the music. On, on your mark, get set, start writing. All right, some of you just sat there and never moved one single finger to write. Here's my thought. You must have them completely memorized. And you're thinking through those things so intently that you're going to make sure that you accomplish them. Here's my guess. 
Whatever those goals are, they typically have something to do with family, your job, your career, finances, or your health. My guess would be whatever those three goals are probably had something to do with those. Here's the problem. If you said, you know what, I want to lose 15 pounds, and you're, that was your New Year's resolution in January, and you've put on 15 pounds, <laughs> somewhere you got distracted. Does that make sense? There's a reason that we set goals and we got to stay focused to accomplish these things. Listen, if you're a student, you're a young person, a single, listen, the enemy wants to distract you at this season of your life. And he will use whatever he can to manipulate and distract you during this season of life from accomplishing what God has for you. You're a mom or a dad, you're a parent. Whether you're in a blended family, a traditional together family, or a single family, and you're a single parent raising children, listen, there's no trophy for raising children. There's no bump in pay. But there will be distractions on your parenting skill. And you'll get distracted in the middle of trying to raise children. So if you're going to be a great parent, you've got to stay laser focused. You want to have a great marriage. There will be distractions. Whether that comes through media or internet, ambition, bitterness, distractions will keep you from a great marriage. The point is, it's easy to get distracted. And pretty soon we're off focus, we're off task, and we're off mission. And Nehemiah said, I'm not coming down. God's called me to do a great work, and I will not come down off this wall. Verse number 10, back to chapter 6. Listen to how he uh, begins to describe uh, the rest of this. Verse 10, now when I went into the house of Shemaiah, who was confined to his home, he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple. Listen to how he says this. Hey, Nehemiah. Let's go down to the temple together. Let us close the doors of the temple, for they're coming to kill you. They're going to kill you by night. And I said to him, should such a man as I run away? What man such as I could go into the temple and live? I'll not go in. Verse 12, and I understood and saw that God had not sent him but had pronounced the prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. And Sanballat and Tobiah, these dudes are doing everything they can to stop the building of this wall. Now they've gone out and hired a prophet, so to speak. And for this purpose he was hired, that I should be afraid and act in this way, and here it is, and sin. If I go into the temple, it's sin, he is saying so they could give me a bad name in order to taunt me. Remember Tobiah and Sanballat, O God. According to these things that they did, and also the prophetess Nodiah, and the rest of the prophets who wanted to make me afraid. God, I'm not coming down off this wall unless you call me off this wall. You have called me to do a great work, I recognize how important it is. I would offer the second thing that, if you're going to stay laser focused, would be this. You need to be careful who you listen to. Now listen, the older we get, the more important this piece is in our life. Being careful who we listen to. We were talking about this earlier in, at uh, my home this week. And I was asking my kids, when Dela had come home from college, I was asking them, what are some times in our life where somebody's given you some, adv- given you some advice? And, and I heard all kinds of crazy stories. And, uh, and, and Danielle, she was cracking me up. She said, do you remember, and she mentioned this little, this girl that she just thought was awesome. She was this, uh, this basketball player. Danielle was this uh, little girl, and she was one of our neighbors. Danielle said, she told me one day, Dad, that if I really wanted to be a great basketball player, I needed to go out in the yard and eat grass. 
and, I, and I looked at her and I said, I don't remember that. Did you go eat grass? And she said, I did. <laughs> now listen, be careful who you listen to. Nehemiah has this gentleman that comes to him in the name of a prophet. He says, listen, if you'll just go over to the temple with me, I'll close the doors. I'll hide you because Larry, Moe, and Curly want to kill you. So we got to get you, we got to get you protected. Now listen, 2 Chronicles, we're going to throw it up on the screen. 2 Chronicles 23.6. The reason Nehemiah said it would be a sin for me to do it is because God had already laid out who could go into the temple. Let no one enter the house of the Lord except the priest and ministering Levites. And he is not a priest, he's not a Levite. So he knows it is against the law of God for him to go into the temple, so there's no way this guy could be legit. Listen, just because somebody is nice or they smell good, or they tell you they're the expert, you better have the wisdom to know who to listen to. Who should have your ear? Because not all are equipped to give wise counsel. So how do you know who those right voices are? I, <clears throat> I don't remember who it was, but early, uh, when I was a young person, I pulled it out of my Bible because I've seen it in there. I used to have this, um, this King James Bible I grew up with, and I wrote all kinds of notes in it, and this is one of the notes I wrote in there. How do I know who the right voices are to listen to? And again, I'm not sure who it was that said this, but I wrote this down. Does this person that I'm listening to, do they love God? And that's key. You want to hear wise counsel, do they love God? Can you see it in their life? Do they love me? Do they care about me? Do they demonstrate it? But the third thing, as I was, I was getting ready for this sermon and, and just thinking through this that I jotted down, is do they publicly display their love for God and me? Ooh. Because it's one thing, we talked about this a few weeks ago, it's one thing to say it, it's another thing to show it. We talked about that on Veterans Day. To be able to talk about it and show it are two different things. Otherwise, these guys in Nehemiah's life, the guys I just called Mo, Larry, and Curly, these guys, Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem, they don't have good intentions for Nehemiah. And yet they've gone out and hired somebody in the name of God. We're going to hire this prophet to do something. So I want you to be careful of who you listen to. You're going to stay focused. You're going to have laser focus to accomplish what God's called you to accomplish. Remember how important the work is. Be careful who you listen to. And then thirdly, I'd offer this. Celebrate the accomplishments. Watch what happens starting in verse number 15. So the wall was finished on the 25th day of the month, Elul, which would be the end of summer, August, September. We finished it, I love this, in 52 days. And when all our enemies heard of it, all the nations around us were afraid and fell greatly in their own esteem, for they perceived that this work had been accomplished with the help of our God. Now, I love this part of chapter 6 of Nehemiah. Because as much has been thrown at Nehemiah and the people of God, they heard it, they saw it, they felt it, they stayed focused to accomplish what God had called them to. <clears throat> a few years ago, um, I was driving to a meeting, and it was a Christ Together gathering of the state of Florida pastors from all around the state were getting together. There's a couple of hundred pastors. We were meeting down at a place called Campus Crusade. If you've ever been to their home offices, they're down past the airport. But I really, I was pretty new to Central Florida, and I really didn't know my way around. So I, w I had GPS on, and I had driven past the airport exit off of 528. I'd gone past the airport exit, and I was to get off at another exit. And uh, in the middle of going down there, I got a phone call from my daughter. Now, she was about to graduate. She had gone to Palm Beach Atlantic University. She was about to graduate uh, from college. And, 
And so in the midst of me heading down to Campus Crusade for this meeting, uh, I was kind of on time, so I'm not flying or anything. I'm just kind of cruising my way down there. Danielle starts talking to me on the phone, and she's extremely excited. Hey, graduation is right around the corner. I'm excited you and mom. And I had been invited to be a part of the ceremony. And so we were just talking about how cool it was. She's sharing with me all this great stuff going on at school. And I'm driving, and I went right past the exit. Now, she's talking, the whole time she's talking, but if you've ever used your phone for navigation, sometimes it gets quiet in the middle of a conversation. It's not quite as loud. And so I just kept on driving right past the exit, and I realized, oh, I just missed the exit. Well, I'll just turn around. The problem was there wasn't another exit for about 15 minutes. And I, I just kept driving, and so I'm, I'm trying to figure out where am I going. I didn't really know where I was. The whole time I'm talking, Danielle had no clue. She's just telling me how awesome everything is at PBA and what God's doing in her life and how excited she is for graduation. There's a picture of she and I. I had to throw in my picture of me sitting next to Ben Carson. He was the speaker that day. And, uh, and so we're just, she's telling me everything. Here's my point. All of the excitement of my baby girl. And yet I get distracted on something as simple as directions to a meeting. And I can miss out on the joy and journey of a conversation that will only happen one time in this lifetime. And that's Danielle sharing with me all that God's doing in her life on her way to graduation. We have a tendency to just think about the destination and we forget about the journey. And the journey is where relationships are built and the joy of the journey is where we build intimacy with the Father because we go up and down through life and it's in those times of the valley that He feeds us and nourishes us and builds that relationship with us. One of the things that I love about Nehemiah is that he's kind of a normal Joe. You don't find Nehemiah healing people. He's not calling down fire from heaven. Nehemiah is not multiplying bread and fish. He's living kind of an ordinary life, but he does something extraordinary because he steps out on faith. <clears throat> I think that's a lot like us. An ordinary group of people that can do something extraordinary when we step out to follow him by faith. Nehemiah trusted God. He followed him by faith. He wasn't running from the conflict but he was staying laser-focused on what God had called him to do. So listen, if you are in the middle of parenting and you're experiencing the challenge of conflict, and you're trying to navigate through what it looks like to, uh, to raise the kind of kids that you believe God's called you to raise, don't run. Don't hide. But don't come off the wall. Keep building and keep growing your children for His glory. You've got a spouse, and you're experiencing some turbulence in marriage. I want to encourage you, those distractions will cause you to come down off the hill, come down off of the wall. Don't do it. Don't give up. You're a leader, and you're leading in an organization. You're leading in some area of life. Stay focused. The enemy is going to have distractions. He's going to use people to come along and try to get you to come down off the wall. But you've got to stay focused. If you're a follower of Christ in this place, listen, distractions will come to offset what God is calling you to. And the Holy Spirit begins to work in your heart and stir you to draw you close to Him. Distractions will come. Can I just encourage you? As we've processed through Nehemiah chapter 6, and I'm going I'm to just press pause right there, and maybe we'll come back and pick up the rest of the chapter later, but I'm going to press pause right there because I want to say this to you and I. Victory is coming. And you may not recognize it today, you may not sense it today, but victory is coming. And like we talked about a week ago, if the only purpose in life is just to get the trophy at the end and you miss out on the journey in the process, you're going to miss out on the joy that God has in your life of developing relationship. 
And the victory that you need to overcome may just be one day away. It may be a week away. It may be a month away. So don't give up. Don't get distracted. Allow God that He has already poured in you, into you the vision. Allow Him to do the work in you so that He can accomplish what He needs to do through you. Too many people get distracted, discouraged, and they move away from the mission that God's called them to. <clears throat> if you're watching by way of internet today and you're grappling with this, man, reach out to us. What can we do to support you? Because the distractions are going to come. We talked about it a few weeks, weeks ago. The naysayers are going to surface. Things will be said. Things will be done. And as we see in the life of Nehemiah, all they said was just come on down and meet us in Ono. Let's talk through this thing. He said, I'm not going to do it, guys. Well, we know what you're up to, Nehemiah. You've got this plan to rebel with the people and set up your own little empire here. And he said in verse number 8, you guys are crazy. You are just making this stuff up. And he calls it like it is, and he laser focuses himself back on what God's called him to. So I want to encourage you today, as a follower of Jesus Christ, what is that vision He has birthed in you? What has He placed in you to accomplish in this lifetime for His glory, not for your own accolade, but for His glory? And how do we get you in that mode, in the fast lane of trying to discover exactly what it is that God has for you so that you can be so focused that even when distractions come, you've got to have the wisdom to know who you're listening to. Remember how powerful the work is but celebrate the accomplishments along the way. God is doing something great in your life. But if all you can do is focus on all the negative and the bad, you're going to miss out on the glory of what God's doing. So today, I just draw our attention to Nehemiah chapter 6. What a fascinating passage. And in 52 days, because they had people that were committed to accomplishing something great for God, in 52 days, the wall was set. How powerful is that? They got a victory. Father, we love you. We thank you for what you teach us from your word. Over these next uh, few seconds, may we have a time of reflection. Maybe re-examine this chapter. Think through the notes we've had today. Process what you're uh, calling us to. And uh, may we reflect over these next uh, minute and a half or so as we prepare ourselves to continue Worshiping you and giving. May we have a time of reflection on what we've heard from the Word of God today and through the worship of song today. In Christ's name, amen.